In this tutorial I'm going to look at scatter plots and some of the options you might like to use for these. I'm only going to look at the simple scatter plots and scatter plots with groups and we, we might look at some of these other options later when we do regression. If we go to simple scatter plots, we put in our two variables here and of course we can do multiple graphs like we did with the dot plots. I'm just going to look at one graph for now. If you've been reading a textbook, you'll see that they usually advise you to put your dependent variable on the y-axis and your independent variable on the x-axis. Now, if you have set up an experiment and you are deliberately controlling one variable and you're waiting to see what the other one does, then it's very easy to determine which is your independent and which is your dependent. With observational or survey data, that's not always clear. In this case, we might suggest that the, that the selling price de depends on land area and consider this to be our y variable. In either case, whichever way around you put it, if there is a correlation you'll, you'll see it on the graph. It just means the graph will have been rotated 90 degrees. So let's take a look. Now it looks like there might be a relationship between the land area and the selling price in that we have some points over here that have a lot of land area and a high selling price but this is just a couple of data points and it's clear that there's a whole lot of other data points on this side of the graph that are on top of each other. If we want to get a clearer picture of what's going on here we might want to just for the purposes of the graph exclude a couple of data points. It doesn't mean that we're deleting them from the data set it just means we're just going to exclude them for one graph so we can sort of zoom in on this area. And the way we do that if I go to scatter plot simple OK and we'll go to date options and you'll have this option uh, in all of the graphs that you do. I just haven't used it so far. I'm going to specify a couple of rows to exclude and that's going to be my row numbers 57 and 218 and they were my two uh, most extreme houses in terms of land area. If you're not sure what row number they are of course you just wave your mouse over the, the point on the plot and it will pop up what it is. So OK and have the same plot again but without those two extreme values and we'll see here that the x-axis now only goes up to 3500 instead of about 4500 so we're getting this data a little bit more spread out and now when we look at this data it actually doesn't look like there's very much of a relationship going on between land area and selling price we have some expensive houses that don't have a lot of area and we have cheap houses that don't have a lot of area and we also have some houses that do have a lot of land area and they're only sort of mid-range in price. So now that we've taken out just a couple of the extreme values it looks like there's not a lot of relationship there and I wouldn't think that there is a really strong correlation. By contrast if I graph you the selling price versus the asking price Now I'm just going to make sure I'm, I'm plotting all my data again. It's a perfect match. There's a complete, there's an absolute correlation here between the asking price and the selling price. And the reason you're getting a perfect line here is because I made the asking price up by adding $20,000 onto the selling price. So in real data you wouldn't expect to get a perfect correlation like this well not with most data anyway. In this case we've got it because I made the data up. So we won't look any more at the imaginary plot. We'll go back to the real one and see, see what else we can determine about that. Now something we might be interested in here while we're looking at the end and the selling price together is just to colour in these dots by different groups to see if that shows us any patterns that are going on. So if I go to my scatter plot with groups it gives me the option to colour in the dots by another variable and you need to choose a categorical variable for this. So I might choose region or I might choose pool and even though the number of garages, bathrooms and bedrooms are count variables, if there's only a couple of different um, options here, say for bathrooms if we only had one, two or three, we might treat that as a categorical variable. In this case I'm just going to have a look at region and we can see that again the most expensive houses in region 2 which is coloured red but we've also got some very cheap houses in region 2. Region 4 that's the ones that we saw on the dot plot that seem to be clumped together and um, 
it looks like most of the houses in Region 4 don't have a whole lot of land area, but there is a variety of prices from just above $100,000 almost up, well, up to $300,000. Although there is this one house out here which has quite a lot of area, but it's not very expensive like it is in Region 2. And then we can look at how, say, all the Region 1 data points are grouped together in terms of both land area and selling price and the Region 3, the green dots.